In today's video, we will look at the effects of nuclear weapons on humans. On the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in August 1945, nuclear bombs were used twice. Our understanding of the impacts of nuclear weapons is based on evidence from these events, as well as from atmospheric nuclear testing and nuclear power accidents. The scope of the destruction would be significantly increased by the use of modern nuclear weapons, which typically have much greater explosive power than those initial two bombs. A nuclear explosion's core can reach temperatures of several million degrees Celsius. The ensuing heat flash effectively evaporates all human tissue across a large region. In a half-mile radius around Hiroshima, the majority of those caught in the open were reduced to little more than their burnt-into-stone shadows. As buildings fall and all flammable objects catch fire, anyone who are sheltered or within structures will be indirectly killed by the blast and heat impacts. Over 90% of people will die right away. As the oxygen is used up, numerous small fires will combine to form a firestorm. Air is sucked in from the perimeter at or near ground level as the heat rises. In addition to causing deadly hurricane force winds, this causes the fire to continue burning as new oxygen is consumed. In places like Hamburg and Tokyo, heavy, extensive conventional bombardment has also resulted in firestorms of this nature. Even those who escape the initial heat flash in underground shelters will perish as the oxygen is sucked out of the atmosphere. There will be a gradually rising percentage of immediate survivors outside the area of absolute catastrophe. However, the majority of individuals will have severe internal wounds, deadly burns, and blindness. They will also be bleeding from glass splinters. Many people will be trapped in burning and collapsing structures. The number of fatalities will be larger than in a typical disaster because most emergency services won't be able to respond because their employees and equipment have been killed. Any nation's medical infrastructure would be overwhelmed by the sheer number of casualties. According to the International Red Cross, the deployment of a single nuclear weapon in or close to a populated area will probably cause a humanitarian catastrophe that will be impossible to handle. In the event of a nuclear assault, there is currently no international strategy in place to provide humanitarian aid to survivors. The majority of victims would at most receive palliative care. The best they could aspire for was to pass away as painlessly as they could. Short term. Radioactive fallout will start to impact survivors in a few days. Whether the nuclear weapon explodes in the air, as it did at Hiroshima, or when it hits the ground will affect the fallout size. The latter will release significantly more radioactive material into the atmosphere than the former, which will have a greater explosive impact. Wind direction and speed determine the fall coverage outs area. The radioactive material's heavier particles will fall nearby or immediately. Finer particles will first go farther before descending. Before they interact with water vapor and fall as radioactive rain, very small particles may be blown much further. After the 1986 Chernobyl nuclear power plant explosion and fire in the Ukraine, radioactive rain spread throughout Northern Europe over the following few days in a wide arc from Scandinavia to Scotland, Cumbria, and Wales, a distance of more than 1,700 miles from Chernobyl. Hair loss, bleeding from the mouth and gums, internal bleeding and hemorrhagic diarrhea, gangrenous ulcers, vomiting, fever, delirium, and a terminal coma are all side effects of exposure to high amounts of radioactive fallout. Because there is no effective treatment, death occurs within days. While there is a greater likelihood of at least short-term survival at lower exposure levels, the fatality rate nevertheless remains significant. Those who do survive deal with numerous challenges. Women who are pregnant are more likely to miscarry or deliver children who have a variety of impairments. Injuries frequently heal slowly, leaving behind recognizable scar tissue. Immune system harm is probably going to happen. Long term. 
Many people will develop radiation-induced malignancies, frequently more than 20 years later. Radiation exposure is particularly linked to some diseases, such as thyroid cancer in youngsters. According to statistics, leukemia and birth defects are more likely to occur in children of radiation exposure. It is challenging to link a specific cancer to a specific cause because of the length of time between exposure and cancer start. The relationship between smoking and lung cancer was statistically established before the medical connections had been discovered, which is why the correlation is referred to as epidemiological. Given the extensive destruction of records, population shifts, and a general censorship on nuclear impacts by the U.S. occupation regime, accurate estimates of the long-term mortality at Hiroshima and Nagasaki are not feasible. However, the figures of casualties that are frequently used are 140,000 in Hiroshima and 75,000 in Nagasaki. Incomparable to any other weapon, nuclear bombs seriously harm the climate and environment. The International Red Cross has conducted research that illustrates the effects of a limited nuclear conflict employing 100 bombs the size of Hiroshima, or less than 5% of the global arsenal. The subsequent flames 5 million tons of soot would result in an average 1.3 C drop in global temperature. The production of food would be severely impacted by the altered global climate. According to the Red Cross, a nuclear war might lead to the famine of 1 billion people worldwide. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more.